Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me tmaso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly. I am tmaso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. This is the type of watch I love to review. Finely made, rare, and exquisitely complicated from a great model line and brand. Launched in 2010 at Basel World, this is the Blancpain 50 Fathoms Chronograph Flyback Contiem Complet. It is a calendar moon phase flyback chronograph. It's also a dive watch. So the watch is 45 millimeters in diameter and stainless steel, 17.3 millimeters thick, but it's short across the wrist at only 50.6 millimeters lug tip to lug tip with a 23 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Normally a 17 millimeter thick watch that's also 45 in diameter wouldn't fit me, but in this case, yeah, it does. You could see down the barrel, the lugs are out to the edge of my wrist, but not over. They are right out to the edge, but this is somewhere between go and no go. And the further away my wrist gets from the camera, the more obvious it is that this is a go rather than a no go. I'm gonna give you a wide shot so you can really see this watch in proportion on a 16 centimeter circumference wrist. You can see how big my hand is. This is a watch that I could and would love to wear. Getting closer now. We'll examine the strap, which is blue sailcloth, a ridiculously durable textile. It was equipped on the 50 Fathoms when the standard model debuted back in 2007. I've seen examples that are 10, 11, 12 years old that are still in service. It is a really long wearing and durable material. It's got a little bit of bolstering to give it some volume. You can see it's a blue textile with a monotone stitch folded edge. On the bottom, a rubber inlay so that the material won't aggress against the wrist and it has a wonderfully supple feel. It also prevents the sweat, moisture, and grit of the wrist from soiling the strap. We have a full deployment clasp here. This is a nice feature because the 50 Fathoms doesn't always include one, but this is a flagship piece, an upgraded calendar moon phase flyback chronograph 50. So we get a double deployment clasp and it features twin triggers. So you have to press both of these triggers to open it up. It will not pop open due to violence or sudden change in motion. Taking a look at the lugs, you can see Blancpain has done things the right way on a heavy and expensive watch. We have screws, hex screws in this case, fixing a bar in place, so no spring bars. Spring bars have a reputation for giving way at the worst times or for tricking you into thinking they're secure and then popping out. The great thing here is that Blancpain spent a little bit more money and used the bar solution, which I like to see. The case is full polish, and you can see the name of the brand on the side. There's also a sharp break between lug and case. This isn't merely a dive watch duplicate of the well-known Seamasters and Submariners of the world. This is a distinctive Blancpain case shape. We have what appear to be screw down chronograph pushers, but in fact, they are merely shouldered, which means you can use them at any time. Despite the watch's full 300 meter water resistance, I wouldn't use it underwater, Blancpain made some statements to the effect that you could use this while submerged. I do not endorse that. I, unless you have one of the magnetic pusher systems from Breitling, I never endorse using pushers while submerged. Even so, the shear guard or the shoulder does protect against shearing damage and because the watch is exquisitely sealed, there's no need for screw down pushers in order to maintain that 300 meter hermeticity. We do have a screw down crown with stubby little pointy crown guards. The bezel is one of the highlights of any modern 50 Fathoms. Starting with the 2003 anniversary model, we started seeing this lovely cambered sapphire cap on the bezel. There are other brands that have used sapphire caps, including Grand Seiko, Bremont, IWC, but they generally use flat sapphires. This cambered look is dramatically more expensive and it has a magnifier-like effect. Also, it's more beautiful than simply using a scratch-resistant ceramic insert. It is, however, even more scratch-resistant than ceramic, and because it caps the loom on the bezel, the bezel can be fully loomed without any danger of the loom getting discharged by scratches, scuffs, or direct contact. And we have this lovely full-loomed bezel and full-loomed dial. And really, take a look at that. Even the sub-registers are loomed here. And every bit of the bezel is luminescent. Because the whole bezel is loomed, it's easier to read the passage of time. You don't have to guess. It's a 120-click bezel. And the action, I would describe it as chunkier and more mechanical than something on a Rolex but more refined than the belt-fed machine gun of a Doxa or a Panerai submersible. Dial, 
rosette guilloche at center, and then a satinated metal brushed track underneath the hours. We have applique hour indices and numeral 12. Broadsword syringe hybrid hands for the hours and minutes. We have a counterweighted chronograph seconds hand, and then we have a lunette-style date indicator. This watch uses Blancpain's patented underlug corrector system, which has two main advantages. The first is that you don't need any tools, and the second is that it cleans up the case flank as there are no pusher adjusters available externally. Now, there is a third benefit, which is that it will not allow you to adjust the calendar during the nighttime danger zone hours. It will automatically lock you out and save you from yourself or save your watch from yourself. So let's demonstrate how the system works. You can see the lunette date is accelerating around the dial here as I adjust using the pusher system. All you need is a fingernail. You don't need a tool. We also have a flyback chronograph, so reset and restart without first having to stop. Moon phase inside the seconds sub-register at the bottom. And you can see that the day and the month discs are the same color as the dial, which is good taste. Flip it all over, a spectacular blasted and polished Nautilus shell, or at least I'm going to call it a Nautilus shell, in white gold. Under that, we have the caliber 66BF8, which is based on the 1185 from Frédéric Piguet, which is manufactured Blancpain. It is automatic winding with unidirectional winding action as a 40-hour power reserve, a 3 hertz beat rate. It operates using column wheel and vertical clutch, the column wheel for a crisp feel, and the vertical clutch for smooth engagement without any jump or stagger. So it's a very smooth system to activate, but also a very precise one. And because there's no additional wear and tear with the vertical clutch, you can just leave your chronograph running full time if you like to have center seconds. The movement is nicely finished. Let me get a little bit closer here. It pivots on 37 joules. It is adjusted in a high horology style five positions. They use engine turning on the bridges, which is an unconventional treatment as we usually see stripes or Geneva waves on bridges. But I like the look of the engine turning. It's unusual and it's something only a handful of others do, so it feels unique. The wheels are satinated. The screw heads are black polished. The engelage is good. It's estimable. It started mechanically, but finished by hand undoubtedly due to the rounded mirrored profile and you get what you pay for. This is a high horology movement from a high horology manufacturer inside a high horology watch. Reach out to Tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.